Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cafecito Time. Ding, 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 do not I inhale. Another bullshit. Do not, yeah, don't do not inhale. do that. Don't inhale bullshit. I told y'all. Did I not say before we got started? Uh, <laughs> I'm just we're, not we're, all there. Uh, shout out to my wife. She's juggling quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually about to gear up for tour. I'm going to have some tour dates for y'all. Um, actually, I think I yeah, do I'm have some there. tour dates. Ooh. Wednesday, McAllen, Texas. Did that pop? Hello, hello. Are we good? Wednesday, McAllen, Texas. Are y'all ready? Are y'all? We starting off the show with commercials. This is Cafecito time. But we got to spam y'all today. We got new merch coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it going to be? Podcastpulgar.com. We haven't decided yet. I got Damn, a couple of them. We still haven't decided. That's I, I funny. got like four of them from our meeting that day. So we just decided on one. I was thinking okay. Shop RPT and Podcastpulgar.com. Okay. All right. But we shall see. Uh, Wednesday, January 20, 25th at the uh, 80s Brewery in McAllen, Texas. Uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Meet and greet till 10. This is with Raymond Orta. This is like this is like uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Thursday, January 26th, Isla Grand Beach Resort, 7 to 9 p.m. Friday, Laredo, Texas, 7 to 9 p.m. at the Royal Receptions Ballroom. Yeah. Laredo, you know, they ain't got an improv, nothing like that. So that's their improv. So cheers. Everybody. Cheers. A lot of work. A lot of work. That's cheers. 2023. Upward and onward. Yes, sir. Does anybody want to know what this is? I'm dying to know. Where, where, where can I buy one of those? What is it? This is actually a coffee purse. So if you don't want to carry your coffee. Whoa, se la dea. Well, that's because it's pretty much empty now. Oh, there's okay, nothing. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> there's nothing in the coffee <laughs> anymore. So. She's like, I'm messing up this whole QVC <laughs> yeah, infomercial. Exactly. Anyway, you can carry your coffee like this, ladies, but keep in mind, mine's pretty empty right now. So once I refill, it'll it, hold up. But isn't it the cutest thing? And it you were will, saying it's for like a coffee cup, right? Like a smaller one? It's more for a re- like legit coffee cup. So word on the street. Yeah, is, that one's a little top heavy. That's yeah, why. this one's, yeah. 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 It's word on the street is also that this is what's in, in New York. So I'm curious to see these pictures of New Yorkers with their coffee bag. Like so that they don't have to hold it. They're like walking, holding it like this. And um, my vendor showed me a picture. I was like, what? One of your vendors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Showed me the pictures. And I was just like, that's insane. You know what I'm saying? You, you should. Uh, I can hit up Danny Brown. We get a P.O. box on Christina P. And you can send her a nice uh, welcome to Texas kit. Uh, shout out to your mom's house, YMH Studios. Check me out on the Danny Brown show. And go leave a comment. Go leave a comment. Go leave a good comment. Yeah, you should. You should send them to the Because you got some people box. on there that are like, I'm really disappointed in Danny Brown and YMH for uh, for platforming someone like Chingo Bling. Other ones are like, hell yeah. yeah. YMH need to get man. him up in the house. Dude, there's pockets of people. There's people that are like, I ain't seen, man, Ching- oh shit, this is taking me back to high school. Damn, we used to jam it. And I'm like, where have you been? Yeah. They're like, where you been? <laughs> I'm like, H-Town. I've been trying to put it out everywhere and y'all it, it ain't been hitting y'all but hey it's all good isn't that crazy yeah there's just that, pockets as much pockets as you people. spam people as I, much as I we thought make say, as much as you smoke <laughs> as much as you spam people you know and, and not in a bad way you know I mean, yeah, we're we always advertising uh, promoting, it's promoting, it's promoting content i mean spotify you know? gave us the year wrapped up and it said like wow y'all created X amount of thousands of minutes of content and X amount of episodes. And 3,000 more minutes than other people in the political uh, like, category. Than like 95% of other people in the news category. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Y'all did that. Everything's, yeah, RPT, RPT Studios on YouTube. Everything's in the green. Like, whether it's the Her Lounge or the RPT or the Chingo Bling one, all I on need. I need my bank account being the green. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> I need the button in order for that to hit order. Uh, burr, burr, burr. Put the sound machine button by me, so I could just. The last mm. thing we need. Just be I a have a machine. question for you guys, and Rob, I'm going to ask you this okay. because you were kind of anti-marriage. Mm. Mm. I put uh, me on the spot. Uh, yeah, damn. As soon as you the were, year starts, you were anti-marriage. <laughs> just it's like you on first forty-eight. All uh, the lights got dim. Is it true? Where were you on what January I say, 6th? Like two years ago, three years. When we first started podcasting, which was how many years ago? Three? Yeah, 18. Or more? 18. Okay, so 2018. Damn, I'm, I'm really behind. Um, so I remember we talked about marriage. You're like, no, nah, it's cool. Living with each other is just fine. Like, yeah. why, you know, if it ain't broke, why? Yeah. You can fuck with it, right? So now that you're married, right? Now that you're a true conservative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're married, I have a question for you. Do you still, would you still give that advice to a younger person than you? Like, no, bro, don't get married. Or 
actually, you know what? It's it's not what you think or it's not bad or, you know, whatever the case is. And I'm at, I'm, I'm asking just, mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. curious. Yeah. I would say, uh, try to find as, as Shingo would put it, some real big homies who, kinda, <laughs> who will kind of guide you and advise you that like a lot of people, when you ask them that, they're like, man, it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of, it's not supposed to be work. If you're in a relationship and you feel like, man, this is tough to get through on a day-to-day basis, probably not marriage material. So just line yourself up with somebody who aligns with the way you look at the world and you'll, you'll find yourself falling into it's time to get married. Yeah, find you a real wo- a woman and lock that in. Yeah. Uh, I was saying yesterday, I was like, Psh. I was texting Marty Sword because um, Juan played some clips of uh, Just Pearly things. Mm-hmm. How she was schooling people about like feminism and and uh, like society and culture and, you know, what women could get away with and how women think that, you know, I'm a bad bitch and this and that. And they ain't bringing shit to the table and yada, yada. And I was like, you know what? Let me text my wife because right well, that's now, why i was asking because i actually saw an episode of hers where she has her family on her parents have been married 30 years six children three adopted so so six plus three and it was just one son one day brought his friend home and said so this guy is having problems at home can he just kind of but they were laughing they're like he brought him home like a puppy i've already bathed him and and fed him do y'all think he can stay here you know and being the parents that they are they came from big families. So she comes from nine siblings and then the dad has their 13. So she had six. If she could have kept going, she said she would have, but they decided to stop at six and then they adopted three more. So they were asking like the numbers of divorce rate, which I, I knew that, but I didn't know it was that high. Like I didn't know it has, it's continuing to grow. Like Mm -hmm. I just thought, and so she asked and this is why I'm asking, because I think that's a different generation. You know, they're a little bit younger than they're 10 years younger than my parents. So my parents, I would say, is another generation because that's a whole decade. And then your parents are a different generation than mine because yours are even old. Your your parents are older mm-hmm. than mine. Mm-hmm. And they were saying that they feel like it's because we live in a world of a low attention span, Mm -hmm. right? Meaning like we swipe this fast. We are constantly like just a board, right? So relationships get boring to you. So when you're married, you're like, shit, there's no fun in this anymore. I can't swipe. Is it left or right? It's right. If you like, okay. (laughs) Okay. You can't swipe right or left, I guess, because you're having fun, right? I guess. So you can't swipe left, right? Anymore because now you're just, you've decided to commit to this one person and it's like, mm, yeah, it's time for me to chunk the dues. Meanwhile, it's not really working. Meanwhile, both of our parents are divorced. Like, my parents Yeah, divorced. my parents got divorced. Parents yeah. divorced too. I used to call it rabbit fire. You just like, swipe, 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 swipe. Like, it didn't matter who it was. You would just match with whoever and if you liked him, you would accept. If not, you would just keep going. There you go. So Rapid fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess it's all how you look at that lifestyle, right? Like, some people could look at it like, that's nothing but drama, chaos. That ain't even what you want. You know what I'm saying? It's oh, just too... you didn't let me finish. Oh, my bad. Let me, let me keep going. Here's where I'm going to ask both you guys the question. They grew up on 40 acres. Talking pretty about, much. Talking about just pearly things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Pretty much kind of, not isolated, I would say, but you're on 40 acres. You're not, a, they say that you're not allowed to leave the compound, right? That's kind <laughs> of the, where the rules were because they were, had a little, four, what are they, ATVs yeah, or whatever? ATVs. And, and so, stuff. um, so you're not allowed to kind of leave that premise. So you don't, it's not like, Hey, I'll be back. I'm going to go to my friend's house. Cause you're so damn far from the next friend. You know what I'm saying? Or plus they had s- six kids and or pl- nine, I guess, you know, total. So, you know, they have each other. So I guess there wasn't, I guess that much of a need to say, I'll be back. I'm gonna go hang with my homies or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Do y'all think that because they were so, and Rob, I'm I'm asking you because you grew up kind of this way. Yeah. Yeah. That keeps more of a, because the way just Pearly thinks the way she thinks it's a very conservative point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, very logical. Like there's nothing dumb about what she says. It's like, yeah. Now, many women who I feel disagree with her, I feel it's because there's a sense of insecurity somewhere in life for them or somewhere they haven't matured um, to where they can see things through her 
through the uh, through her lenses and she's pretty young she's fairly young she's not like an older girl you know i don't even think she's married i don't know but do you think that has anything to do with it where how they're able to keep the marriage united the family united because they're so distant from isolated isolated like they're in their own little world type of thing you want to go first Shingo? um i mean first of all i don't know everything about how that girl grew up and there's obviously a lot of variables right there's just all kind of things like what was their religious life and what other activities and what how did they how was it on a day-to-day basis did their parents fight and shit on 40 acres bitch right. you better go over there to your 20 acres. no one's gonna hear you here <laughs> i know where the bodies are um so i i don't really know but um i know that she was raised pretty damn well from what I, from what i could tell mm-hmm. and she's gone super viral like the female andrew tate yeah and this morning i saw the vice debate on a feminism they had like 10 12 we're talking about that on my podcast okay. like 10 12 quote unquote females right mm. some of them were trans and shit but she was just breaking it down and everybody else was about you know intersectionality and the power structures and you know ableism and colorism and all the isms it was and so ridiculous i couldn't <sighs> finish watching it it's just like the woke i saw the whole thing it was like the woke mind virus i forwarded it to like gil from american cholo like my sisters i want my 14 year old to watch it just so that like she could be up on game as to like how she could just see for herself, mm-hmm. like how some people are like, well, you don't have to get 25 abortions. And the other ones are like, oh, it's about access, you know, minorities and women of cut people. To the, and she's like, minorities and people in the hood have more access to abortion. Yeah. You know, and they're like, ah. Yeah, logic. It just like melts their brain. And the only thing I can really say to it is like, what, where I grew up, it wasn't, you know, 40 acres. It was like 10, right? And if you wanted to go to the city out here, it was an hour and some change. Back then, there that was, sounds like not motivating to, to go an hour plus to go to de- yeah. Why, like what? The only why would why do you guys why do you think that somebody that was young in the country in the rural areas of like like the outskirts of Houston would want to come to a city? What do you think they want to do? Probably clubs or bars, Party, or yeah. just have a good time, right? Social. Connect with people, maybe like maybe you like I, I don't really think the same as a lot of my friends. Just like that's just who's around me. But then when the internet came around, like there's no real huge incentive works you can either work remotely you can drive in when you need to you can find a way to like connect Mm -hmm. work build a career build a platform without having to be in the hive Mm -hmm. before like i i thought like you had to be in the hive now it's like giving the fuck away from the hive. yeah like um i remember one time uh we were in laredo for something i know i was trying to like shoot like a little music video out there or something and uh my buddy two dope dave he had like this hip-hop clothing store like sneakers the yeezys and all this type of streetwear and um me and my boy were like we could just wear what we got on. We're going to be the flyers in this whole mall anyway. This is Laredo. You know what I mean? Like, they barely got internet. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, they ain't what they got. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, what y'all mall got? Y'all yeah. ain't got this. Y'all ain't got SF2. Y'all ain't got that. Y'all don't be wearing Coogee or whatever. And, dude, I fucking walk in, and these kids were like, drip game. I was like, <laughs> fuck, I am the worst dressed. <laughs> I have the dustiest kicks in this entire mall. Like, these kids, like, they could have been, like, straight out of L.A. or New York. Just because, like, they're up on game with Instagram and the internet and whatever, and they're able to, like, get it. They can order it online. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it comes to the doorstep. Boop. You got the same outfit as everybody else. There's too many influences when you're in the city. Like, if kids grow up in the city and their parents are trying to instill something on them and they're walking to school or they're walking to the shop down the street or even walking to the mall, like, you're coming in contact with a lot of, like, groups and different, like, perspectives who might just not influence your kid in a way that you want them. In the rural areas, like, it's pretty cl- cut and clear, like, what your parents want for you, right? A contribution to society would be, like, growing up, like, having good morals, like, settling down and not being too crazy and wild. And it sounds like, man, they're really restricting me. But it's like, if you want to push society forward, we need more people that think that way and want to grow up that way versus the Mm -hmm. alternative. Yeah. So Mm. it's not like you're saying Harris County got too much uh, (laughs) sin (laughs) and degeneracy and and everything else. Yeah. Um, Anyone want me to tell you what else they said? What? What? If they could change one thing about their marriage, it was not working together. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Who who's they? The Pearly White's parents. We're oh, talking about they how they were, oh. they did. They're okay. no longer. Um, I guess that I don't know. I haven't gotten to the part of that they closed the business or whatever. But they would never work together again. If they would do it, could do it all over because that was the majority of their arguments. Yeah, which is funny because 
Mm-hmm. That's Dudes. the majority of our yeah. Because I'm yeah. on Mighty Souls ass like, hey, um, it's still for potential sponsors. We ain't email yet. Mm-hmm. It just takes two seconds. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, my parents are the same way. I mean, the trucking company. My mom kind of does all the admin stuff, and it's it's that's there's always a point of content. Finances as it is, it's always a yeah. pain in the ass. You bring mm-hmm. a business model into the finances. Yeah. It's yeah hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. So should yeah. you fire me then? No, I work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like uh, we got a couple potential sponsors. Uh, we had a typo in the email, so it's a couple potential sponsors thinking I forgot about them. But that, it's like I need money. They think you're authentic, though. They're like, "Oh, this Chingo, like this is how we write the email." <laughs> yeah, he drops the ball. He actually does it. Like he sent me the email. No, it's a very well crafted email. <laughs> That's why I need money. She got it in her notes. <laughs> I need you to send that email. Yeah, I got you. Mm. Yeah, my CPA is out of town. You know, so some of my little admin stuff is on hold. Mm. Yeah, so I was just curious, like. Yeah. It's interesting. How you saw about marriage because, for example, I never cared to have children, Mm -hmm. right? That was never in my vision. I was glad when I met him that he had a kid, which because it meant that he was not going to ask me to have any kids because he already had one. So, you know, and I never felt the need or the want. And it was way later, you know, after being together like almost four years, I was like, and my mom always said, you'll know when you're ready to have kids or you may never have that feeling because it's it's not for you, right? And so I was like, yeah, it's not for me, mom, period. Like, it's not. So period. yeah, like it's not. And so then like I've, I've said the story, it was like we're in Hawaii. I saw the mom out there. I was like, wow, I pretty much, I've done, I mean, I finished school. I had a business, you know, so it was like, so yeah. how would you guys tell people right now? Let's say they were going into 2023, you know, a couple, they're like, you know, I think this is the year we have kids. But what do you think? Like, just look based off what the climate of the world, not the actual climate, but you know what I mean? Like just the world, the country. What would you tell you? We need couple? more soldiers. We need more we need strong more, right? women. We need infantry. Yeah, we need. Uh, I If I would have started younger, I would have had more now that I know what it's like to be a mom and have kids and the joy they actually bring into your home. Like the laughter you the look noise, at them the noise the diapers. it's it's overwhelming sometimes yes you know but i love when i and i'm this is going to sound awful but i love when i see a little 17 month old trying to fight my 4 year old and i know that's <laughs> awful to say but it's hilarious right cuz she's not even playing like she'll go up there and just like yank her hair she's 17 months bro so it's kind of like you know set it off yeah it's funny right it's funny but not funny Take but you see house. what i'm saying so um it's hilarious you know and like you know sometimes i'll she'll just you know you'll as they're growing they're learning words and you're listening to you're like wow you know i don't i don't remember penny doing this this young or you know you start seeing the comparing you know yeah, yeah and so i wish i would have started earlier because now i'm 41 and you know I'm 43, changing diapers. What's interesting is you guys had kids in the last five years, right? Two kids in the last five years, and you guys have experienced one of the highest highs in the U.S. economy and one of the lowest lows in the U.S. economy. And you've made it, you're making it through both. You know, Mm -hmm. we get it, no jokes necessary. But if if someone's also thinking about like, man, this is a terrible time, you're like, we've done it. Like we've managed to get through the highs of the highs and the lows of the lows. I don't think you're ever truly, um, there's always going to be some kind of financial situation with children i don't ever and i mean by this they're going to be in activities did you plan for those activities before when you were pregnant no you know what i'm saying like did you plan for now two kids to be in activities no and most people i get it don't put their kids in activities as little as i as maybe like how i have my baby right she's 17 months and a lot of people just kind of wait until they're a little bit older. They're actually able to do things because a lot of them, when they're that little, require the mommy and me or yeah. the daddy and me classes. So you are obligated to go versus just letting them go in the class. And then you're just kind of sitting waiting, you know, uh, with Penny. She went to gym class when she was little and swim class. I have Sunny in the same situation. She's in swim and in her gym class. Mm-hmm. But now Penny is in all kind of shit. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's you know, like, oh, my God, hurry up. End your, end your podcast early because now she's got this one mm-hmm. and this one and this one. I'm trying to make content. No, you got to go pick up. Yeah, because you know. I'm at, you know, I'm at the store, you know, whatever it is. But yeah, it's always going to be a ton of responsibility. 
You know, that's why I like sleep supplements, like sleep schedule, like all the lame, boring stuff that like, <laughs> like when you're in your 20s out there turning up, pop, you know, drinking alcohol and doing all kind of crazy shit. It's like, that's the last thing you want. Like, bro, do I really want to do a diaper run, formula run? Like, damn, we need... The babies need more strawberries and this and their grapes and the whatever else. and Juice. Yeah, the Danimals and you over here. You know, that's not something you had to concern yourself before kids. I mean, before kids, when my friends would... It was like, say, what juices do I want? Like, my, <laughs> yeah, well, before my my friends would be like, well, I, I can't right now because I've got whatever. I'd be like, oh, Ooh, my God, lame. why would you have kids? Like, that's so much work, you know? That's how I felt. Guys, I didn't have my first child until i was 37 years old well i was 36 and she was born and then i turned 37 also not very uncommon these days no so i waited like legit a very long time to have my first one and when i had my second one i was turning 40 so you know what i mean i mean i legit waited what i love most about having my kids at this age is that I have zero desire to go to that young life again. You know, like I partied till there was no partying. You know, I... My party now is like me and Marisol chilling in a room. The kids are asleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? All that's done. Now it's a little bit of us time. You know, kick it. What what kind of snacks we bring into <laughs> the room. Yeah. It's, like, it's like our little apartment. Like our bedroom <laughs> is like our little apartment. It's like, okay. Do you have right. a couch in your apartment? No, we haven't no, put the. We, she's gonna set what, up a nook. Yeah, I'm gonna set up. We have like this weird nook in our room. I never knew kind of what to do with it, but then I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put like two, like a little sitting area. Mm-hmm. So maybe he and I can read there. You know, because I tend to want to fall asleep if I try to read at my yeah, I can't do at it, my, read bed, my bed. No. You know, so I thought maybe if I put two little chairs there and mm-hmm. you know, we hook it up. She's like, right she, now, she really wants to make content right there. She's like, oh, I'm going to do a get ready with me right here. I do. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But we've, right now we have yoga pillows there and that's where he goes and stretches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put a standing desk in that little nook. No, desk? I don't want to work. Well, I want a desk in there. Yeah, I don't want to work. Why the fuck? I, I thought Robert, about it. Robert Garza. Where are you going to read? You're just going to put chairs there instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, uh, it's like like lounging chairs. Like, you know, chairs. Honestly, you bro, could... I don't even really think reading is the. You know what I mean? Like, you could read anywhere. You could read downstairs in front of the fireplace. We got rocking chairs. We got a lazy boy. There's like a plethora of options for, quote unquote, this this imaginary reading that's all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, that's going to happen. Right, watch, ma- look at magazines, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just curious what y'all thought about marriage because you said it's it shouldn't be work, but I think it it, it, it does yeah, take it work. It's it does take be, work to, yeah. to have married. And I, I know what you mean by it. Like it shouldn't it takes be effort. It doesn't yes, take work. Like it shouldn't be like, fuck, I gotta go home with now, this. Now bitch we split today. hairs you here, know? Rob. Now, you know, work and effort, two different things. It is two different things. I, I know what you mean. I know, I, I kinda know what you mean. Meaning like work's a grind. No, effort I, I, is you're I, putting I, forth effort. No, I think what you mean is um relationships shouldn't be to the level of negative drama, chaos, stress, yeah. and work and effort mm-hmm. to where it's like, bro, you better off, like, you better off being, como mejor solo que acompañado. Mal acompañado. Mal acompañado. Right. So, mm-hmm. like, you better, you're going to be in a shitty situation, you might as well be miserable by your damn self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. However, um, you know, I, I feel like, it, when you find the one. Sure. And, and listen. It's very rewarding. I n- you know, like, I don't need for anybody to, like, tell me my imperfections. I know them, and I apologize for them plenty of times. He can and tell I, you And that. I recognize them. <laughs> I, I hear you, and I see I acknowledge you. Yeah. I hear you, and, and I see And it's like, I will say, thank you for putting up with this. I, I texted her yesterday, thank you for respecting me. Ooh, Ooh, that's a good one. Come on now. That's real good. Come on now. That's what I, and I'm at, I'm at, I'm Put at it the, on a shirt. If that ain't a clip. <laughs> hey, I, I was at the store and I got that text and I was like, Ooh. I was like looking around. She got like, excited. Am I, am I hitting camera what, right now? Is he, what is is he about to pull right up? Why is he being so nice to me? <laughs> is this new show idea I don't know about? <laughs> <laughs> what does he want? Because he's being really nice to me right now. <laughs> Thank you for respecting me. <laughs> and I did. I said, what have you been watching? <laughs> what you, what's going on in what your substances head? are you around right now yeah no I'm, he's I'm, really good at comp- like he's that's I, i've said this on my even my podcast like i'm smaller now than i was a year ago her but, bones shrunk <laughs> but he's never said 
you need to get to the fucking gym. You are fat as fuck. Or, you know, he's never said like anything. I'm not there just like, hey, so like, have you thought about interme- intermittent fasting? Yeah. Or, Day number seven uh, of trying to get her to eye. Hey, out. so like you had talked about doing sprints uh, the other day. What's how's that going? <laughs> so like it's never been any of that. Even at my heaviest, uh, he always made sure to like. Make me feel like he I mean, was still I ain't no Fabio, me. my damn self, so, but you know. But you know, that's not how you met your wife. Yeah. It's kind of like, that was my dad's thing. And I've, I've said this before. My dad's thing is, you don't marry somebody. Like, if you married someone big, well, then yeah, that's how you married her. That's you how you wanted then. her then, you know. But if you didn't marry somebody big, you know, it was like you both took care of yourself. He used to always say, yes, you're not always going to be, you know, this itty bitty person. But there's no need for this, like, insane like, amount, amount of weight to be gained, you like know. You transformed. It's like he, he, he would say, my, he would use my mom as an example, like, Yes, she would get really big when she was pregnant. She'd have you guys. She'd stay chubby. But then it was like, oh, it would go away after, mm-hmm. you know, a while. Then it would, she'd have another kid. And then, you know, it would go away. And then it's kind of like mm, what I've. That's it, life. You know. That's and life. so, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, uh, he's always been really, that was my point. He's always been really good about it. So it was just, but it was like the compliments were really good yesterday. I was like, okay, Chingo. Yeah. Cause man, <laughs> Anybody that's ma- that's married to one of these like hardcore woke uh, feminist super like the power structures of the women's pay is not and all the obstacles for our gender and da 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 and ac- it's about access and the power structures of uh, our bodies and da-da-da. oh my god that sounds exhausting yeah it's that's like work. yo you need to chill that's work that's work, that's work to try yeah to that's that hella work. work I couldn't do it imagine trying to make that work like you would have to really put that like a, like a full time job okay and she met sh- on on the one where she had just uh, pearly things Andrew Tate per, just pearly mm. things she said so she has women who disagree right and so about dating and all this but she says and and you can't be mad at it you date your level so when you dated a fuck up, right? Because you, you know, you're like, oh, I can't believe I dated him. You know, he was such a Bitch, fuck up. You, you were know? the fuck up. Well, yeah, that's what you attracted at the time. Whether that wasn't your standard, or right, because you lowered you, you lowered your standard. Well, yeah, that's what you chose at the time. So you can't blame him because you <laughs> have the option of saying what. Yes or no. no? It's like that Cat Williams joke. He's like, uh, uh, women always saying uh, ends ain't shit. And these ends ain't shit. <laughs> and these N words ain't shit. He's like, uh, <laughs> maybe you should figure out why yo coochie keep attracting ain't shit ends. <laughs> maybe you got some ain't shit coochie. That's like, so funny. Kind of the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, it is, yeah. you know? And, it, and then when she was saying that, I was like, Oh, that's so true. <laughs> you start looking back at relationships. Yes, Damn, no, that's I really like. Shit. And I never really had like serious relationships. I've only had one, my husband, right, babe? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the real one. Um, I never really had like serious, serious relationships. But you know, you're in betweeners. You're just kind of like in between. The one in betweeners. Uh, was that the one where Tate was? Uh, I don't know if he was talking to just probably things where it was like uh, women don't like when women are young, nineteen, twenty, and you're all hot shit. You don't really value. You don't want monogamy, and you don't value a guy that you know. Is, it's good, right? Yeah. But when he's thirty-five, you expect him to be monogamous, and like he's got his shit together now. So I think we should all settle down. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. double, it's a double standard, is it not? Yeah, I mean, I think that if you're expecting him to bring something to the table, you should also like. If he's got his shit together, then bitch, you need to have your shit together too. Like, don't just be like, "Yes, I found one that's got it together." Like, I'm about to put all this debt on him. You know, because he's got the money. I don't. I'm in debt, you know, or you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, I think those are things you need to talk about. Like, I didn't come into my relationship with debt. I didn't come into my relationship with baggage. Baggage. I didn't come with anything. You know what I'm saying? I pretty much could, came in free. Wasn't uh, Kevin Samuels the name of the gentleman that passed away where he would. Do you remember? Do you, uh, you familiar? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know if you y'all feel mm-hmm. like doing clips and shit. But anyway, y'all can look it up on y'all's own. Where he had a, a YouTube show where he would have like females call in and he'd break them down. Where they'd be like, I, I'm not going to settle. They'd be like, I deserve yada, yada, yada. I need a man to this. And he got to have at least this and at least that. And he'd be like, okay, so what do you do for a living? How many kids do you have? What do you, what's oh, your is it back? a black gentleman? Yes. Yes. And, he, and he'd break it down. He's like, you're, how are you, 
how do you have these expectations when look at what you have going on? Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, you need to simmer down, get you a good dude that's willing to take care of you. He's going to work hard and do the best he can instead of you over here like, these motherfuckers ain't shit and I deserve this, I deserve that. He's like, nah, reality check. Yeah. So... It's great content. Yeah, I think I think people just go into a relationship um, or a marriage, you know, like um, it's important to sit down and kind of talk about a lot of stuff before you just kind of like say, yeah, you know, I feel bubbly and I have all these butterflies and it feels great. And we're going to have this amazing wedding for Instagram and we're going to make sure that all the reels for our wedding are dope and the backgrounds. And, you know, they're thinking about all that. And then they forget about what's really <clears throat> the important thing, which is, mm -hmm. you know, for me, right? Because we didn't have a, a formal wedding. I had to lock that in. That's So why. I told him that I said, I don't, I, I'll be honest. I never really cared to have a wedding. My, my most important one was getting married in church. That's the one I really care most about. And it's because I feel like one, God needs to bless your marriage. Two, if you finna do this, y'all both need to come mm -hmm. to an understanding like it's forever bro like mm -hmm. you either finna do this it's gonna be a lot of work it's, it's gonna be a lot it's commitment it's work you in gotta the be sense, a one woman man you have to like that's big homie talk right there <laughs> and I, i've been trying to like really communicate that on on rpt red pill tamales make sure you tune in chingo bling network i've been trying to push like the big homie stuff in terms of uh like that, um, like the relationship stuff, like, you know, the culture pushes like, I got to have a lot of hoes and I'm pimping in mm -hmm. this one and I'm going to break this one and she going to have, she, this one going to give me that money and da, 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 da. And, uh, and it's like, I would advise to the, to the young males out there, like, there's a lot of power that comes with sex. And if you reframe it as you over here trying to figure out how many hoes you could juggle, it's like, they got power over you. How much power do you have as a man to be able to turn hoes down like you know what i'm saying yeah. like let hoes know you ain't available mm -hmm. that's power showing these hoes your wedding ring bitch back the fuck up mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's power and one of the most uh rewarding parts about our relationship is late night you know what i'm saying get you some snacks <laughs> pull up uh pull up what babe what you watching there's something about flat earth <laughs> Oh my god what what did we do last night oh rob god. yes Come on, last rob. night rob he ain't got an open mind bro that's not true he ain't got an open mind about this last shit. night i said i looked at him i said is this really happening right now am i totally She's about like to am i getting persuaded <laughs> am i totally about to believe that the flirt that the earth is flat i was like i can't the i can't flirt. i know i can't watch this like i was like this is scary i don't want to believe this and that is for another coffee at the time episode yeah. bro and if you haven't sat and watched any of this stuff shout out to hibbler productions on youtube yeah he's gonna have bryce mitchell on the next one. Oh, badass mm -hmm. listen like i told you like you know it takes a lot for me to be like mm, i don't know i'm gonna have to keep looking you know yeah for it's everything like, y'all gotta prove to me the motherfucker around i was like now i feel like well wait now you do need to show me that though i ain't seen that one the picture earth of the earth is, like without a fisheye lens on it i was like okay that like, is very did we true. really go to the moon why we ain't been back? I'm still, honestly, I'm still that we didn't. That's just me. That's my own. Why, you know what I'm saying? It's so many little lies. It's weird. Mm -hmm. and Why y'all green screening and everything? If you put, if you, if you start watching it. Have you seen the old clips of Buzz Aldrin saying all kinds of different stuff on like late night shows where he's like, you, yeah. you, you saw, you thought we were wrong. It was all uh, make believe. It was all a green screen. He said shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Um, you're probably too young. Uh, for a fact, I know you're too young. You familiar with the Challenger space sh shuttle? Explosion? Yeah. The one that exploded. Yeah. So I think even my soul is too young. I think yeah, I don't. I, like, I don't remember really. I was in. That. I think I was in elementary, and it was like, oh, kids, gather around, turn on the TV. We're gonna see NASA and the United States is doing this thing, and there was a teacher on there allegedly, and it's like, <laughs> and oh my god, and it's this is so. Oh my god, this is America. Oh, ah, psh, and it was traumatic. We're like, bro, did we just see all these people fucking blow up on TV? And it just like fucked up school for the rest of the day, and. Um, and we'll come to find out all these people, they professors, they they live in a life. There's a whole conspiracy. They're yeah, like, no, I have bro. a twin. I have a twin. All y'all got twins, bitch. Only one of them had a twin. Well, all of them alive. Allegedly. They, bro, they went up to him and said, hey, and it's like, oh, it, it's not me. Like, yeah. you just got to look at the picture of like, this it's person teaches. No, I here. get it. I've Freaky. seen that. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some of that stuff. It's. I was like, 
why are we watching this before we're going to bed? Because I, my brain right now is like, it exploded. I'm the emoji with the brain exploding right now as I'm watching this. I was like, she like, <laughs> I was like, I was choked on a blunt. Like, no <laughs> way. <laughs> hey, before we wrap up today's guy, see the time. Uh, tell me why my wife, she's roasting me. She's like, you didn't know who Jodeci was? I was like, yeah, it's nine o'clock at night. She's Come watching Cover See the Time. Let's just mention that his wife is white and Asian and she knew who Jodeci was. And she's from the country too. She's also right? eight years older than me. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, that's the biggest factor. Yeah, that's the biggest factor. And then your older siblings probably didn't jam that. Well, they did. That's why I was jamming to the Fugees. Cause I, I, and she also, she was like, you thought Faith Hill? I said, motherfucker, you know who I was talking about. <laughs> She knew what I was talking about. I can hear her. I can. I can. I picture her face. When it comes to food, you, when it comes to food and music, Rob is just Dave Matthews and John uh, Mayer, son of a I'm bitch. I'm sorry, John Mayer, <laughs> and just ketchup on the burger, and that's it. That's right. Plain American cheese. So you've never had a water burger with the German Texas mustard? No. <sighs> Ooh, you've never had a water burger then. Well, how? listen, I'm weird about about mustard. It's like it just I don't like what is that Dijon mustard? Mm-hmm. It's just too like a great poupon. <laughs> yeah, I don't like great it. Great poupon. <laughs> Have you ever had yeah. great poupon? It's all right. I might, but the German one, the spicy, the German mustard, bro. Extra sharp. When my mom, my mom went to Germany. Well, I, I gave them a two. Yeah, oh, you gave Dawn them a two. Loves it. It's mm-hmm. so. She good. puts on her popcorn and shit. <sighs> yeah, it's and got so a kick. That's to it. probably the one that's like okay, I can do this one, but I can't do the regular. Yeah, like like um, uh, see, you like beer, so like Oktoberfest, mm-hmm. the Germans, mm-hmm. it's all about like sausage, mustard, right. beer. So you're missing out on one third <laughs> <laughs> of the German lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Anyways, um, I'd love to hear if you are watching this or if you are listening. If you go like leave a us sponsor. a sponsor, com- yeah, go leave us a comment and let us know like what you feel like is the hardest part about marriage in the comments below tell in us the comments yes. below. yeah tell us. how long have you been married and is it work is it work because and let me tell you something kim kardashian said she would be she's gonna she wants to be married again <sighs> anything that comes out of her mouth is garbage and now if that would make it her like fifth fourth fifth filth flarn filth i think it's like her fourth damn marriage and she feels like the fourth is the charm is what she said of course she's gonna say that <laughs> and i'm just like i can't imagine like listen i mean bro she shows her booty for a living mm-hmm. you know what i mean i, I you just how you marrying that dog? i don't know anyway go on status I mean, and power status and power you know send us also um so if you'd like to be a um, cafecito, cafecito Time sponsor, you can email us at marisol at shingobling.com. Um, we drop an episode every Monday. We can shout, shout out your business, service, or product. Every Tuesday. Every yeah. Tuesday. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Every Tuesday. Yes. And uh, we have people interested. So uh, as soon well, as we email them. Well, there's a few slots because we don't want to be spammers. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, um, oh, wait. What? I think the majority of them are filled up. Oh, okay, that's great. Wait, have p- anybody? Uh, yeah, uh, I remember I said it, uh, we didn't talk last night because we started yeah. talking. We're, talking we're looking at flat earth. Flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember I said I need to talk to you about one of our sponsors. They're asking to go. Oh yeah, they have some okay, questions. Yeah. Questions, yeah. So maybe so, that's two. That cool. are, like really serious. No, I think that's three, and we said we were only gonna have five okay, slots. Okay, three that are really serious, and four emails that have not gone out. Cool. So we might not have a spot, but if you do want to come on, get on the list. Get on the list, <laughs> and mm-hmm. oh, but we we're gonna do the. We are going to do consider the hundred dollar shout out ones. I'm going to add those. those are so those on Patreon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's just a quick boom boom boom. Yeah. Okay. That's, so that's something different, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Never like, mind. The blah 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 segment is brought to you by yada yada. Yeah. That's um, for our patrons. And another thing, not to bombard y'all with sponsor information, the package that we're offering certain interested companies and things like that includes RPT, Red Pill Tamales, and Cafecito Time. However. I'm going to start a new podcast. I believe it's going to be called the What Did He Said podcast or like the Chingo Bling Project or something. And then Marisol also has her lounge. So those two could potentially be like a whole nother. Consider. Like you could have five other. Yeah, it's part of the Chingo Bling Network. So speaking of spamming, y'all, uh, Wednesday, January 25th, McAllen, Texas. Thursday, January 26th uh, at South Padre Island. And then Laredo, Texas. Damn, what's the date? Uh, 
25th, 26th. Is that the 27th? It'll be a, it'll Friday be the 27th. Okay. And um, by the time this drops, the links will already be up on shingobling.com. Yep. So by the time they get this, um, you can go on shingobling.com, start getting your tickets now. Um, and it's going to be fun because we're doing this with Raymond. Yeah, with, Ra- yeah. with Raymond Orta. So I'm. Re- it sounds really exciting. I think there's synergy there. I'm looking forward to it. Badass. Can't wait. Yeah. Thank you, guys. See you all next week. Later.